G'day Trailblazers, my name is Cam, and for today's video we're taking you through the lookup rows function in server-side JavaScript, showing you how it's similar to the AmpScript function and how you can use it to return values from your data extensions into your cloud pages and emails. So the lookup rows function in server-side JavaScript can be found in the documentation by going to your programmatic languages under server-side JavaScript, through your functions to the platform functions, data extensions, and lookup rows. And lookup rows function has three ordinals just the same as the AmScript version, specifying the name of the data extension to look up, and then the name value pair of the criteria to look up rows against. But once again, if you're familiar with the AmScript version, then you'll be very familiar with this server-side JavaScript version as well. So let's step through how it works on server-side JavaScript and use it on a sample data extension. We can start off by one of these code examples we've got here. Let's pick up one of our first ones here. We'll copy this code and jump into Marketing Cloud to try it out for ourselves. So I'm going to follow on from where my previous video on the SSJS lookup function I was looking at my sample rows data extension, returning the first name based on the ID and value provided from a data extension. Now currently when I refreshed this, I got the value of Astro, because that was Astro's ID that I was looking up from my data extension. So now we have some new code for our lookup rows in server side JavaScript. Let's see how that one looks. So we'll paste this one below and see what it looks like. Now, once again, a very similar function to the lookup function. This one, of course, having just three ordinals and not four. First thing we do is specify the data extension. So to make this work for ourselves, I'm going to reuse my sample rows data extension and paste it there. And the criteria to look up at the moment, my criteria was for a single row lookup. So I'll reuse that for now. I'll use the ID and Astro's ID to look up and return those rows. Now at the moment, the platform function lookup rows is going to look up my sample rows where ID is equal to that and return the row object where that condition is met and save that object as data rows. So I'm going to use some server-side JavaScript with a if statement to check to see if the row data is being set. Again, that's done by specifying the variable. If the variable is full, it's got something in it, then it renders as true. And to and signs means it's going to be an and condition. And that object of rows has a length or a row count that is greater than zero. So it has at least one row in it. Now, if that is true, then we're going to jump into a for loop, my favorite. We'll declare the variable of i starting at zero. We're then going to iterate through where i is less than the row count, which is good, that length of the rows we just returned, and then increase the row by one and continue to iterate through. And as it does, do this function. And this function is going to do our platform response write function, which of course is just like our v function in AMP script. We're going to write out the contained value within. And the contained value within at the moment is referencing that returned object. Now, if you were doing this in AMP script, you would have to do the usual rows and fields function to return back the exact row and field that you want to present. However, in server-side JavaScript, we can use the JSON object addressing, which lets us specify the JSON object, the row number, and the field all in one easy little line here. No need for additional functions to specify that address. So taking a look at our data extension, of course, let's return a value. Let's return the email address value. That's an easy one. And maybe first name as well, just for good measure. So we've got first name and email address. Let's return those two values from the row. So the first thing we want to do is return back. We'll go first name. It's going to return back from data rows, that JSON row object, the I row that we're on starting from zero. Of course, ordinals in JSON start from zero. Returning back the field of first name. Once we've got that, we will then add a pipe character with some spaces. And then let's do another function. We're now going to output the data rows again, this time returning another field, not the first name field, let's do the email address. Just like that. So now we should have first name and email address coming back from this data extension, which for Astro's record ending in 141D should be Astro and of course Astro's email. 141D, good. Hopefully these two values come back. So let's remove my first script for lookup. Don't need that. We'll just use our new one here. So with that done, let's go save and let's try and render it. Refresh, beautiful first name and email address. Now, of course, the lookup rows function worked really well with a single row. We almost didn't need this for loop. 
But what if we did need the for loop? What if we were going to try and cycle through multiple returned rows, such as all of the customers in a data extension where the email opt-in flag equals true? Well, let's try that one out. I'll make an email opt-in equals true as our value to look for. So we'll change this to email opt-in. I'm going to look up whether value is equal to true. It's going to return back all those rows. And when it does, it's going to return back the first name pipe email address. However, we do want to separate these by line. So let's also concat some more HTML in and we'll do the line break, whether it be R. So now it should enter each value, each row, as its own line on our screen. Now, how many of these rows do we have in our data? Well, for true, we've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. So we should get nine rows returned. It's so one, two, three, four that are not. All right. So that done, let's go save and refresh and hopefully get nine rows returned. All right. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. Perfect. So just those records with the email opt-in was equal to true. And we can check this, of course, because we didn't see Cloudy, Ernie, Max, or Meta. Nope, no Cloudy, no Max, no Meta. All right. We could change that condition, though, to only return the false records. So we'll copy false, go into our lookup here and make it false and go save. Now we should just get those four records back. There we go. Now, one thing to make note of here is we did have to address those exact fields. If you have a look closely, we just specify not the data rows object, just like you can't do it in AMP script. You can't reference the entire row object. You have to reference the field within. And of course, the row object inside of server-side JavaScript is a JSON object. So of course, we can take that JSON value, address it correctly on its row and field number. Now, if you're curious as to what that object actually looks like, let me show you. Because we are talking about server-side JavaScript, this JSON object can be returned if we stringify it. So if I take my platform response right here, what we can do is we can actually write out that row return data. Now, I can't write it out just like that. And I'll show you why, because you can't print out an object. So I go in here and press refresh. It's going to say, no, that's an array. That's a, a list of things. I can't show you a whole list you have to turn it into a string. So what we'll do, I'll put that code back down there. We can use the stringify function. So jump into my documentation under platform and go down into our client uh, utility, sorry, utility functions and stringify. We can use our platform function stringify. So if we stringify the data and then we write it, well, now we can see it. So let's try that. We'll go save and render. There we go. And here is the object that was returned by Marketing Cloud from the lookup rows function. And as you can see, square brackets denotes the entire object. And there is one row, two rows, three rows, and four. So as you can see, the lookup rows function in server-side JavaScript is extremely similar to the AMP script similar function for lookup rows. When you do it in server-side JavaScript though, you do get that JSON object returned, which is a lot more flexible and easy to use as a JSON object to look up and address values, but also to stringify and store those values, for example, as a text value in a data extension. And I hope you enjoyed this quick walkthrough of the lookup rows function in server-side JavaScript. If you have, then please let me know in the comments below, a big thumbs up on the video, and don't forget to subscribe to the channel so that you can be notified when I release more Salesforce Marketing Cloud content.